Hello, everyone. My name is Natalia Rodionova. I am the managing director of IT Academy Step Cambodia, as well as one of the organizers of this amazing Cambodian e-learning forum 2020, which I hope you are enjoying. And my topic today is coaching principles for learner-centered pedagogical approach in e-learning environment. I will try to share with you some of the insights um, that we have been using successfully as well um, some ideas that I believe can be helpful for the teachers in any subject or in any educational institution. So what is the coaching? First of all, coaching now is very popular tool for self-development, for business training and other areas. And I believe coaching can be great for the educators. Because coaching means unlocking people's potential to maximize their performance and it is helping them to learn rather to teach them. Coaching is connected to a mindset and a skill set. This is what we are going to discuss with you today. First of all, let's talk about the problems. So what are the main e-teaching problems for the teachers? Challenge number one, what have you, we've heard, that is adapting curriculum and to be able to use digital tools to deliver the um, educational materials. Challenge number two, keep students engaged and motivated. And while we are staying on other different sides of the uh, computer screen, it's very difficult for us to keep students engaged and motivated. And as well for the students to stay keep it engaged and motivated. Challenge number three is to develop students' abilities for self-studies and time management, which becomes very important in this process of uh, e-teaching and, and, and learning online. Students have very similar challenges indeed while learning online. The challenge number two, how to adapt to learning online and use digital tools for studies. Our children are great at using YouTube or playing games, but when it comes to learning online, apparently there are many problems and many challenges. Challenge number two, how to keep focused, manage time and learn how to study independently. And it is quite difficult for many young people. And challenge number three, to be able to make a progress and handle those difficulties and challenges individually when they are left alone at home. They have to deal with a lot of pressure and we should admit that. So in this case, mindset is the key. The educator's role has shifted from an expert to a facilitator and the learning process becomes an equal partnership with learners within a relationship of respect. In this case, communication is changing as well, and it is around establishing effective conversations leading to a meaningful change. So, in this case, teachers' role in the learner-centered teaching environment is to create an atmosphere that supports students' learning and make a change from asking how do we teach to how do they learn? That's very important. In a learner-centered classroom, we are creating positive, safe learning environment that can help students to think, learn, collaborate, and create. The first step to do that, to change your perspective from in the conversation from asking questions that are assuming that someone is guilty or have a negative focus, which we often do, like these questions, what is the problem, whose fault is it, why are you stuck, what would happen if you would not find the answer. So these questions are negative, we have to get rid of them. We have to focus on solutions and asking questions that are empowering and designed to facilitate students' thinking. So designing, these are examples of positively enforcing questions, such as what is the issue? Who, what is involved? What would be the first step towards the solution? 
how would you know you have succeeded? So try to think how you can adapt those questions to your uh, experience. In coaching conversation, the main skills are basically two, being able to listen and being able to communicate. How to develop those skills is by being fully present during your conversation with the students, by actively listening, reflecting back, making pauses, giving time to think, summarizing what you've heard, and if you have understood that correctly, and ask effective coaching questions that are solution-oriented. So you may ask me, so what are those solution-oriented questions? And I would like to give you some examples. So number one, question should be short. For example, what do you want ideally? Avoid giving advice and questions. Have you thought about this? Or do you think this? Or is this really a good idea? These are not good questions. Better, what are your options moving forward? Avoid double, triple, um, complex questions. A good question is a single focus. What would you like to talk about? Start questions with what and how rather than a why. So a better question would be, what has stopped you so far from achieving your goal? I really like this goal grow model, which I, I would like to share with you. So the, the grow model is based on these four steps. Number one, goal. What do you want? What kind of result do you want to achieve? Reality. What is your current situation? options what could you do and will out of all the, those options what will you do what will be your first step the coaching conversation can also be structured around four steps number one setting goal share your expectations and goals to achieve ask students to contribute their thoughts and ideas exploring the current situation Summarize what has been learned, discuss what was tried and what is known. Then identify options, discuss options, and as well as how will you know that this is a successful project or that you have reached the result. And then finally, planning next steps. Discuss further steps as well as timeline, clear timeline. And finally, why I would like to talk to you is how to structure a feedback. A good feedback, feedback that helps to boost. And here are the things that you can take to achieve that. Number one, balanced. The feedback should be balanced. Avoid simply saying good or bad. Your role is not to judge. A more efficient approach is to ask learners what they did that was effective? And how are they going to continue working towards the goal? Observe. Feedback should be based on what you have observed and not on what you have assumed or expected. Objective. Focus on what a learner does, not who you think a learner is. Make sure your feedback is specific. Make sure it is not general and students understand what exactly he or she should be working on after the feedback is provided. And finally, a feedback should be timely. So don't, don't take too much time to give a feedback. Make sure that it comes soon after an activity. So this, after this uh, uh, speech that I just gave to you, I would like to remind you that coaching is a process of continuous development. And it is great, but would demand a lot of engagement from a teacher. And I would like to remind you that maybe the first things to start with is to understanding that what exactly is your role as a teacher? How do you want to help your students? And 
understand that e-learning is a challenging experience both for you and for the students. And to make sure that you can achieve the results, the key here is to keep engaged and motivated as well as develop learning skills for self-study and self-resilience. Coaching helps you to become a guide, not, as a, not an instruction giver. And it helps you to develop skills of your learners, life skills. Your feedback should be structured on guidance principles with positive feedback and action-focused questions. Asking questions is the key in this coaching process. So try to learn and practice asking questions in a better way. And you will see that you will be getting different results, much better answers. Thank you so much for being with me. I'm staying here for Q&A session. And you can also reach me on email or uh, let's chat today at the network of this event. Thank you.